What up, YouTube? Once again, it's your boy, DJ Diet Dr. Pepper. Back at it again for another section of the Super Metroid RBO Let's Play. How y'all doing? So, on the last segment, we had just collected the speed booster and the power bombs. And from what I had remembered, we were on the way to the wrecked ship. But it looks like I'm trying to get some other stuff out of the way first. Ah, that Diet Dr. Pepper be hidden once again. So I think what's going on right now is I'm going back to get everything that I can possibly get in uh, Brinstar. There are a few items that were opened up for me after I picked up power bombs as well as speed booster. So this area is pretty much wide open to me right now. Like this right here, destroying this bridge with the power bombs. There's some pretty neat things down here. I've always really loved this area of the map. You don't really see it much unless you're doing a 100% run or if you get lost on your first playthrough. That wall jump right there is actually uh, surprisingly tricky to pull off. This next room's pretty cool because it's got a f couple items in it. If I remember correctly, it might be a different one. I always get it mixed up, as you can see with that power bomb. So yeah, it was a different room. There's still some more stuff down here, though. I'm struggling with these, uh leech type things this right here what we're about to see I love those dudes you don't ever really get to see them much though especially if you already know how to do this what those guys do basically is they are kind of like a tutorial to teach you how to use uh, certain moves in that room's case what they're trying to teach you is the wall jump So yeah, basically what we're doing right now is just going back over the areas we've already been and clearing out the items that have been opened up to us to get uh, due to the new items that we've collected. A lot of this stuff that we're getting right now actually serves a pretty interesting purpose in the grand scheme of the game because where we're at right now the stuff that we're doing uh, right after you pick up power bombs the game actually opens itself up quite a bit and stops holding your hand as much in terms of like showing you where to go at all times uh, it's actually really smart the way they handled things because they made it to where so many things open up for you after you get the power bombs that even after even if you get lost you don't have to worry about not making progress because there's so many items in the game just another example of how smart the developers were really Because, like, uh, to try to further iterate the point that I'm trying to make, a, a lot of the stuff that we're finding right now is stuff that you would find most likely during a moment of being lost in the main game. Um, because you would be, you know, combing through every single area you've already been through 
trying to find something you missed in hopes of finding a way forward. And all of these pathways being opened up is something that allows you to feel like you're still progressing. Even if you're just finding something as small as a missile tank or an energy tank like we did just now. So I, I think it's really smart. And I think that a lot of uh, a lot of modern Metroidvanias have seen this specific idea that I'm speaking of and integrated that into their games such as Hollow Knight especially. That's a game where you feel like you're never not making progress even if you are ridiculously lost. I've always really liked this area we're going to right now. Especially after I learned how to do it without the gravity suit. This trick you're about to see is pretty cool. So what normally happens is you're supposed to be here with the gravity suit so that you can move through this water freely and build up a speed booster charge. But what we're going to do is tap the run button really fast, which allows us to get speed booster faster. And then we're going to shine spark into those bricks to the left. Like that. There's a strange exploit with Speed Booster where if you tap the run button really fast, it allows you to go into the Speed Booster animation faster than you normally would be able to. I'm not quite sure what causes it, I'm just aware that it exists. And you know, a lot of these tricks that you can learn about this game, uh, more than anything, they just make me wonder, like, how did anybody ever pick up on this? <laughs> because I know that if I was just playing around with this game for the rest of my life, I don't know if I would ever find out any of this, personally. But it really, I really admire the dedication that a lot of people have to this game. Right now, we're going back to old uh, Brinstar, the area which you start the game in, in the original Metroid. Always thought the way that these areas connect is very clever. With a few well-placed power bombs. Look at that, you're right back where the morph ball was. Uh, all this backtracking we're doing right now serves an ultimate purpose. Um, as I said earlier in the video series, uh, I believe in the first video, the goal of what we're doing right now is we're trying to collect as many items as possible to pre pre prepare ourselves for fighting a boss that we're supposed to have every piece of equipment for the first time we fight them. But we're going to fight them with no suit, uh, without the space jump, and without the plasma beam. It's a lot more difficult than it sounds. This is the room that it has multiple items in it. I was getting mixed up with one from earlier. I've always really loved the Super Nintendo sound chip. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, the, uh, the notes being played right here on the lead, it doesn't sound like a real set, of, uh, a real orchestra, but it sounds so big. I, 
I love the Super Nintendo sound chip. I mean, some of my favorite game soundtracks ever are on this console. This room we're in right now is actually the, uh, the room where you fight Mother Brain in the first Metroid game, for those who don't know. I've always thought it was really cool the way that they integrate certain areas from the original Metroid game into this. And this is the, the room that you escape in in the original Metroid. Looks like I'm having a bit of trouble, having a bit of trouble freezing these dudes. There we go. What I'm doing where I'm speeding up through these uh, shafts right here is called a shine spark. It's when you use the speed booster and while you're running in speed booster form, you press down to crouch. That allows you to hold the charge from the speed booster and then if you press jump in either a certain angle or if you just press jump in general, it'll either send you flying straight up or diagonally. really cool technique that the developers added to the game um, and opens up a lot of stuff as you'll see later on. Okay, I think now I'm going to attempt to go to the wrecked ship after I save. Small little detail most people might not notice. Um, the rain that was falling when we first started the game only falls at the very beginning of the game. It never rains again in that little area at all for the rest of the game. Not sure why it's like that. Always thought it was interesting though. This next little trick is pretty cool build up a shine spark charge and then you can skip across this area those tiles at the top of the room are for the grapple beam which allows you to connect to those tiles and get across the room that's the intended way to go across this room if you're really good and you know what you're doing you can actually use a shine spark to get across that room and this room that we're in right now you can see me attempting to build up a charge for an alternate method of doing that. I don't know if it pans out though. Yes, okay. If you're really good, you can just use one shine spark to get all the way across that. So 
So, I'm not quite sure why I'm going up here, because I'm pretty sure all of these doors are locked, and there's nothing I can do to unlock them until I kill the boss of this area. But, like I said in one of the previous videos, I wasn't really going for time on this, I was just trying to complete it. And I wasn't using a guide, I was just going off of my own memory and understanding of how I'm supposed to do this. I did end up using one for some later parts though, but that wasn't until close to the very end of this route. Yeah, we're this room's locked. There might not be anything that we can collect here in the wrecked ship just yet. We'll see though. I don't know why I'm bombing these random blocks. Like, I know where all the items are, and the places I'm bombing are not places that I can do anything in. Probably just force of habit. <laughs> So this is interesting. What I remembered when I went into this area was that there's an item that people say you should always get if you're doing a 100% route before the power comes on here. And I could have swore it was this one, and I still feel that way, but there's no way to get there, so there must be something that I'm forgetting. Here I am checking the map now just because I'm like confused as to what is going on. And that didn't really help me at all. So we're just going to keep searching around trying to figure out what I can get before the power turns on, if anything. The way it's looking right now, I think I'm heading out of here and then going back to Norfair to get the grapple beam and kill Crocomire. Which makes me wonder why I even left Norfair. <laughs> Again, I just want to make it clear, this, this recording I have of this was the first time I ever completed RBO, so I was not uh, super experienced in it. This missile expansion we're getting right now, actually, this entire room that we're in right now, actually also appears in the remake of the first Metroid game called Metroid Zero Mission. Interesting little congruity between the two games. Miss the jump there. And 
and I don't know what I was doing with the the speed booster there, but I really shot myself in the foot. <laughs> And you'll see right here why I recommended in the previous video that one should lay a power bomb as soon as coming through that bottom door. That's because just now when we came through there, it was a blue door, which can be opened by a regular beam instead of a power bomb. It saves a decent amount of time, especially if you're speed running. Best to get into the habit of doing it, especially if you want to start speed running this game. interesting thing about this room is if you jump into those spikes at the top of the ceiling and press the direction opposite of the one you're facing, you can actually take damage and force yourself to fly backwards to get through that room faster. It's a really easy trick, but it's one that I haven't really put in the time to practice, so I don't ever do it. it saves a lot, a lot, a lot of time. So now we're going back to Norfair. Thankfully we got a lot of items. Even though we went off track, we did get a good amount of stuff. I mean, we went from having like four or five energy tanks up to seven. So that's pretty good progress. And now we have 30 power bombs. Where we're going now is to fight the uh, cave dwelling lizard known as Krokemeyer. So this room has one of the trickiest items in the game to get. You gotta jump on these crumbling platforms, which is uh, a lot more difficult than it sounds, so that you can get up top and shoot one of these blocks in the ceiling and hopefully grab a missile expansion in the process. Like that. That's probably my least favorite 100% uh, item to get in the game. So, it's so obscurely hidden and they make it so tedious to get. I mean, it's not that bad if you know how to get, if you know how to wall jump, but eh, it's one of the only things in this game I find to be kind of questionable. It's almost like it's like programmed in a way to where it's like supposed to be frustrating, you know? So now after getting that missile expansion, it looks like I'm trying to fill my health back up. can't remember if I end up trying to farm in here or if I go back up to the yeah I'm going back to the recharge station
probably slower than just going back and forth, but it's a little bit less mentally taxing than it is to just kill the same enemies over and over, so I'm kind of cool with it. Actually, hmm, okay, so it looks like I'm going to refill and then I'm going to go for the x-ray visor. You'll get to see a demonstration of how that works here in a second. Or not. Guess I decided not to get the x-ray visor. You know, the fact that I wasn't going for a good time when I did this really must have uh, freed me up to just doing whatever I wanted. Normally when I play this game, I don't do very very uh, meandering things like that, but it's, it's fun to see myself be free with it a little bit. I don't know why I'm killing these enemies. I must be about to save. Okay. So now, after that missile expansion set us so far off track, I'm going to... I'm on the way right now to fight the boss, Krokemeyer. Trying to avoid taking damage so I can keep my health relatively high. Fall straight down and then go through that door. And then I need to speed boost across this room and that will take me directly to the boss. This boss fight's really cool. Very strange that as soon as you get to this little area where he's at, um, the ultra heated rooms are gone. You don't take any more damage anywhere below this room. Which, it really makes you wonder why they would design it that way. We'll get into that more after the boss fight though. I've always thought this was a really gruesome death for a Nintendo game. Watching this dude's skin melt off like that. It's like, damn. Nintendo would not normally allow something like that to fly. trick on you making you think that he's still alive and that the fight's not over but uh, no that dude's dead <laughs> I mean realistically he wouldn't have even been able to do that honestly this game kind of sucks for the lack of realism there in my opinion and I guess that's the end of the video because I don't like this game anymore nah I'm just fucking with you
I can't remember if the amount of power bombs we need is 35 or 50. It might be 50. We'll get into it later why we need those, but they are actually uh, a crucial component of this category of playthrough. It'll actually be a good moment to showcase some of the more obscure, intentional features of this game. Another thing I really like about this category when playing this game is that it allows a player who is more advanced at speedrunning to see a lot of sections of the map that they don't get to see very often as a speedrunner. Because this entire area, that last boss fight we just did, you... If you are an any percent, any percent speedrunner, which is basically somebody who tries to just beat the game as fast as possible, you never see any of this very often. Like, before this playthrough that I'm doing in this video, I can't remember the last time I went to this area or did any of this. Because all of this becomes, uh, inessential after you learn certain techniques. Which is cool in a way, but also kind of sad in a way because, you know, there's a lot of stuff you'll miss. So as you can see, I just choked that uh, technique I was trying to pull off there. Got it that time, though. Again, if I could go back, I probably wouldn't collect all of these missiles. They're actually really, really, really unnecessary to the playthrough that we're doing right now. But it's a good moment to showcase a lot of the stuff that you can do in this game, so I can't complain. The grapple beam here will, in most playthroughs, it's actually an inessential item once you learn how to wall jump. In this playthrough, it's absolutely essential, as you'll see later. It's actually a pretty fun little item, too. It can be kind of finicky to control, but uh, beyond that, it's cool. Doing a little farming here before we go back to the heated areas. Definitely a good idea to do that. For uh, all of my viewers who celebrate Christmas, uh, did you all have a good Christmas? Uh, definitely let me know in the comments. So, I believe the goal now is to go to the water area, Meridia, and start collecting items there. I may or may not be correct in that statement.
One thing that's nice about all of the energy tanks we've collected so far is they give us a nice little cushion to not be as worried in these areas. I mean, you still definitely have to be mindful of your time and what's going on and definitely don't do whatever the fuck I'm doing right now. Why did I go over here? I know I knew that there wasn't any items over there. I don't know why I did that. Jesus. So again, don't do what I just did. Actually be mindful of the amount of uh, time that you actually have to be in these rooms. Like you can care a lot less uh, now that you got all these energy tanks, but don't do that. should be safe now though yeah we're back in the main room of this place here in Norfair so Again, I think from here we're trying to get to the water area, Meridia. I hope that I fill up my health before I go there. Mm. Looks like instead I'm going for a missile expansion near Kraid. This area that we just entered is where you're supposed to go to fight the first major boss. Uh, we're not about to do that. We're actually just about to grab an item. I'm pretty sure it's just a missile expansion. Yeah, I was right. some reason I'm saving here. Nice little dodge of all those enemies. really wish we could get to that locked door. There's another energy tank in there that would be really useful for us and what we're trying to do. Looks like right now I'm trying to fill up my health before we go to Meridia. Now I'm finally going to get the x-ray visor I was talking about earlier. Don't know why I couldn't make up my mind like that. Oh, I bet you I know why I did it like this. This is actually a lot easier to get to if you have the grapple beam. It's possible to pull it off without the grapple beam, but I guess I just didn't feel like finicking with it. Good moment to show off the way it works. I think technically you're supposed to swing between each uh, little post like that, but I find that it's a lot easier to just rapidly press the button to move across. So the x-ray scope here allows you to see uh, blocks that are destroyable as well as blocks that are ones you can actually pass through, such as the ones we're about to go in through here. It's not really a necessary item, especially if you know where every item is, but 
I guess I, I'm pretty sure I was going for 100% when I did this just because. It's also one that's very nice to have if you're playing like a ROM hack of this game that gives it a new map. And so it looks like now what I'm going to do is fill up my health and then save. Maybe. Yeah, this was a very inefficient, inefficient way to get to a save room. Because where we needed to go actually has a save room almost in the immediate vicinity. But... Hmm. Actually, I guess I'm going all the way to the ship to take advantage of the full recharge over there. Still pretty inefficient, but... Like I said in the previous video, I was not focused on time at all when I did this. I was just trying to play the game and have fun. Which, you know, surprisingly, that was a really fun experience to have. But for everyone watching, I just want to say again, thank you for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day and stay tuned for more.